ever in history, and I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Let me tell you something. I changed more at that moment than anything under LSD and anything under any guru. So let that be my final statement on that to you. All right, we're going to talk about uh, uh, some more of these experiences next week, and I want to take a different approach and go into what does a cello, what does a student that gets into Ekankar or goes into one of the Eastern uh, groups, what do they have to do to reach the so-called God consciousness? All right, we're going to talk about that next week. Please join us. We're glad that you joined us. We're talking about the mystical experiences that people like Shirley MacLaine and other people that are on television making movies today are talking about. Are they for real? Is it all that it's cracked up to be? And my guest tonight, Siri Darwin Gross, the 972nd living Eck master of the group called Eck and Carr. And Eck and Carr is a spiritual organization that says that uh, they have the oldest path to God that's known to man. And secondly, my guest is Mr. Tal Brook, who was the as assistant to Sai Baba, one of the strongest, most powerful gurus in India that had hundreds of thousands of people that uh, came into his presence to uh, see the miraculous done. And he claimed to be the God-man, and he could give them uh, that which they needed. But I'd like to get down to what happens, fellas, to the people that uh, don't start out uh, with God consciousness, do not start out with the mystical experiences, but they want it. What do they have to embrace? Right now, I'll tell you that it's like confusing uh, fool's gold with real gold or saccharin with real sugar. It is an experience, and there's something we need to deal with about experience. Now, what happened with me is that on a full course of LSD in the Virginia countryside, I went through what seemed to be a tunnel of light and seemed to recall all my archetypal names and became like every character in a Shakespearean play. It was a very uh, Lucas Star Wars type of experience in which I thought I became God, and I will tell you in retrospect, it was more like the serpent in the Genesis Garden. You know, we talked about an IQ of 500,000 doing a number on me, let me tell you. But it was enough to propel me to India with a tremendous seal, because it was a very, it seemed, pleasurable experience. And let me also say that people who first inject heroin into their veins have a very pleasurable experience. Now, by experience alone, I was catapulted on a spiritual search that, in which I went all over India and met um, a number of self-proclaimed masters. My belief then as I had read in the, in the different books of the gurus, like Ramakrishna and Vivekananda and Kirpal Singh and Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, and then the, the Indian scriptures like the Upanishads, is here's what's happening. It's the other, it's the figure ground reversal of the Genesis 3 line. Let me explain this one, and then we're going to go on. In the Genesis 3 account, basically Satan promises godhood to man. That caused the fall. That's the sin. In the Eastern way of thinking, the sin is to think you're not God. Okay, do we have that one clearly? It's the other way around. Now here's what the Eastern path requires. It's, it's an attempt to break you out of your supposed amnesia that you're just a human ego, just a man, and not God. So there are any number of yoga paths like Subhid Yoga, Kriya Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, etc., etc., etc. There are a lot of them that supposedly break the delusion of the person into so he can understand that he's one with God again. My question is, is he not getting into a deeper delusion? Okay, I had a very powerful experience, but I've learned that if you make experience your sole key, you're going to get deceived because the devil is known as the great deceiver, and the truth is this. Okay. The Okay, but right in that area, Darwin raised a good question. Right. Okay, you have scripture saying that uh, Satan himself masquerades as an angel, an angel of light, light, and his servants masquerades as servants of righteousness. In Timothy, Paul tells us that uh, in the later times, that some will follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Now, obviously, that's either true or it's a lie. Let's talk about the fact that if it's true, are you saying then that 
what you experienced, what other people are experiencing, was caused by uh, the demonic that we're taking advantage of your opening yourself up and we're programming you to yeah. think in a specific way, which is basically the same pattern that's going right across the boards with these mystical experiences? Yes. yes. This is what happened to me. I reached a crisis point. I was under a guy who uh, basically materialized different things, read minds, did all kinds of things, supposedly healed, and I had a crisis point. I had, number one, here's what I had to deal with. I had my own series of experiences that seemed to validate this way of thinking, which is now the basis of the New Age movement. You're basically God. You're an amnesia. You'd better find out your divinity. I had spent a number of years in India, and before that, and being validated by different masters, Sai Baba is a very high adept, ready to be a master. And then something happened where I felt, uh-oh, there's something that's trying to possess me. Now. I found out something very demonic about this miracle working guru, so here's what I did. I went up on a hill in South India, I looked down at his prayer hall, he claims full deity, and I sort of gave the God of the Bible one last chance. I said, you know, if you're real, now would be a good time to speak for me, to me. And I did Russian roulette with the Bible, and I flipped it up, and I said, you better talk to me now, because I can't explain, how do you explain someone who claims to be God and does miracles? And it said, Matthew 24, 24 is what my eyes had, and it said, And there shall come false prophets and antichrists working great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the very elect of God. Okay? When I did call Christ into my life, that experience was more powerful than the initial LSD thing, but I learned something else as well. And that is that the powers of evil, through deception, wanted to take over my life fully. The word is demon possession. There are accounts in the Bible of, of exorcisms of demons, the greatest being legion, and when, with, with one word, Christ drove them out in the physical sign that they were driven out as they went into a herd of swine which charged right over the cliff and drowned in the lake. So there are demons, there are powers of evil. For years I, I ridiculed this. I didn't want it to be. It seems so, quote, unevolved. But the deeper you get into this stuff, there's some things on the other side, entities that want to take you over for good. Okay, we've we got to take a break here, and then we've got to give Darwin the chance to talk. And Darwin, maybe uh, you can uh, respond to what we've just said here. But also, what I'd also like you to pick up is that you have warned your uh, students about s having bad experiences, and I'd like to hear a little bit more about that, why it is that you did that, Certainly. as well as uh, uh, answer the question, if you would, when we come back, of why it is that people that are having these mystical experiences all seem to be coming up with the same kind of philosophy worldview, okay? And we'll come right back and tackle that when we get right back. Okay, we're back, and uh, to start this off, Shirley MacLaine in her autobiography said this about becoming one with the all. This started her off. Each person that seems to get into the mystical experiences has this kind of experience. Maybe, Darwin, you can see if this relates to something you've had as well. She said, my whole body seemed to float too. She was in a hot tub, apparently. Not only my arms, but all of me. Slowly, slowly, I became the water, and each tingling bubble was a component part of the water. I felt the interconnection of my breathing with the pulse of the energy around me. The air itself seemed to pulsate. In fact, I was the air. I was the air, the water, the darkness, the walls, the bubbles, the candle, the wet rocks under the water, and even the sound of the rushing river outside. I can't tell you how many accounts just like this I've read even in Paul Twitchell, in your books, in other people, why is it that we're all having, not we're all having, but why is it you're having, and many people are having, these kinds of experience that gives you this unity feeling? I'm not having those experiences. Did that, you ever have one? Uh, many years ago. Now, the quote, I believe that you read, Tom, mm -hmm. was out of the Tiger's Fang, which was Paul Twitchell's experience. Absolutely right. Which coincides to some degree of your experience. Now, Paul Twitchell and I believe it was Julian Johnson, both in their writings, said, this is not my work. Paul, uh, to not defend him, but right. to...
clean the record.